In this video we're looking at identifying sequences. In particular we want to see whether they are arithmetic, geometric or quadratic. Before we get stuck into it, it's important to note there are other types of sequences. These three are not the only ones that exist. However, for this lesson we're only going to be looking at arithmetic, geometric and quadratic sequences and the idea is to be able to look at a sequence and decide which type it is. Here are the things you need to know. An arithmetic sequence has a constant first difference. I'll explain what that is when we have a look at the questions. A geometric sequence has a constant common ratio and a quadratic sequence has a constant second difference but does not have a constant first difference. Again, I'll explain what all of that means once we get into the questions. Let's have a look at sequence A. In this sequence, we have a constant first difference. Let me illustrate what the first differences are. To go from one to four, I need to add three. So that difference there is three. To go from four to seven, I need to add three. To go from seven to 10, I need to add three. And hopefully you can see that these differences will also be three. The sequence is going up in steps of three. So the difference between consecutive terms is just three. So what we have is a constant first difference. Constant just means they stay the same. And you can see that this is staying the same. So we have an arithmetic sequence. Now, I just want to make clear that all of these are first differences. I'm not just talking about this first one here. The reason for calling them first differences will become clear later in the video. Anyway, let's move on to sequence B. Again, let's look at the first differences. To go from negative five to negative six, we need to add negative one. To go from negative six to negative seven, we need to add negative one. To go from negative seven to negative eight, we need to add negative one. So we can see these first differences, they are constant, they're staying the same. So that means again, we have an arithmetic sequence. Let's have a look at sequence C. We've got five, 10, 20, 40, 80. Let's check its first differences. To go from five to 10, we have to add five. So that's a difference of positive five. To go from 10 to 20, we have to add 10. To go from 20 to 40, we have to add 20. To go from 40 to 80, we have to add 40. So we can see this sequence is not arithmetic because we don't have the constant first difference. The first differences are changing. Now, let's see if it's a quadratic sequence. A quadratic sequence has to have a constant second difference, but it should not have a constant first difference. So we've got first differences that are not constant. Great. Let's see if the second differences are constant. What do I mean by second differences? Well, second differences are simply the differences between the first differences. So to go from five to 10, we need to add five. So my second difference there is five. To go from 10 to 20, I need to add 10. To go from 20 to 40, I need to add 20. So the second difference there is positive 20. Now, we can see that these second differences are not constant. That means this sequence here can't be quadratic. A quadratic sequence must have a constant second difference. So we've ruled out arithmetic for this sequence. We've ruled out quadratic for this sequence. So let's check that it is a geometric sequence. A geometric sequence must have a common ratio. That means to go from one term to the next, we keep multiplying or dividing by the same amount each time. For this sequence, Hopefully you spotted very quickly that what we are doing to go from one term to the next is multiplying by two. And that means we have a common ratio of two. So we have our answer. This is a geometric sequence. 
Now, sequence D is also geometric. Can you spot what the common ratio is for this one? Pause the video and try to work it out. Hopefully you've spotted that the common ratio is 0 0.6. To go from a thousand to 600, we multiply by 0 0.6. To go from 600 to 360, we multiply by 0 0.6. And similarly from 360 to 216. You can work out what you have to multiply each term by to get to the next by dividing the next term by the previous term. So in this case, if you worked out 600 over 1000 and 360 over 600 and 216 over 360, they all work out to be the same. That's the common ratio. Now, if you tested it on the previous sequence, you can see 10 divided by 5 is 2, 20 divided by 10 is 2, 40 divided by 20 is 2, and so on. 2 is the common ratio for this geometric sequence. If you try to find a common ratio for an arithmetic sequence, you'll run into a problem. For example, take sequence A. To go from 1 to 4, you need to multiply by 4. But to go from 4 to 7, multiplying by 4 doesn't work. To go from 7 to 10, multiplying by 4 doesn't work. So we don't have this common ratio, the idea that you are multiplying by the same quantity to go from one term to the next. Let's finish with sequence E. I'm going to move this up here so we've got more space. Now, hopefully you can see it's not an arithmetic sequence because I'm not adding the same amount each time to get from one term to the next. Hopefully you can also see that it's not a geometric sequence because I'm not multiplying by the same amount to get from one term to the next. To go from one to two, yes, I'm multiplying by two, but to go from two to five, I'm not multiplying by two. So I don't have this common ratio. So let's see if it's a quadratic sequence. For that, we need to find the first differences and the second differences. The first differences are one, three, five, seven, and nine. The second differences are simply the differences between the first differences. Remember the sign matters, positive or negative. To go from one to three, I need to add 2. To go from 3 to 5, I need to add 2. And hopefully you can see that these differences are also 2. So what do we have here? Well, we have a second difference that is constant. It's staying the same. In this case, it's always 2. But we don't have a constant first difference. You can see the first differences are changing. And that's exactly what we need for a sequence to be quadratic. So sequence E is quadratic.